Hello, my name is Leon Finney, and this is Intersection, where faith, business, and politics meet. Today we have a special guest on our show. Her name is Dr. Cynthia Miller. Dr. Miller, tell us something. Uh, there'll be many w watching this show. Some will know you and some will not know you. But give us an idea who you are, where do you come from, where do you grow up, you know? Uh, so give me, kind of expand on this. Well, I am, uh, I come from very humble beginnings. You weren't born a doctor, right? No, I wasn't. <laughs> I, no, I was not. <clears throat> and uh, I had uh, parents who believed in education. Uh, my parents did not have college degrees, so I am actually the first generation college graduate right. in my family. So that is an honor for me, and it is also a legacy because my children and my children's children and their children can never say to me what they cannot do because I am the epitome of what can be done. I got it. <laughs> so where'd you go to school? I went to Catholic schools. I did mm -hmm. not attend CPS schools, okay. but I did attend Catholic schools. I attended St. Anselm's for elementary oh, school. Oh, wait a minute, you did St. Anselm's? St. Anselm's, I was yes. at St. Anselm's too, but I was a little ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then I transferred to St. Columbanus and graduated from St. Columbanus. From there, I went to Loretto Academy for high school. Mm -hmm. Across from Mount Carmel Academy. Across from Mount Carmel, absolutely. Mm -hmm. In Woodlawn, right? Yes, mm -hmm. in Woodlawn. Mm -hmm. And uh, little did I know at that time that I would have a journey in Woodlawn. Mm -hmm. And from Loretto Academy, I attended SIU, Southern mm -hmm. Illinois University, mm -hmm. and did uh, graduate work at Concordia University as well as Southeastern mm -hmm. University. Mm -hmm. Wow. So now, here we are. You're a newly graduated, graduate from SIU, et cetera and you would go into public education. Mm -hmm. What was that like? That was wonderful. That was always a dream of mine to provide service. To be perfectly honest with you, Dr. Finney, I feel closest to God when I am serving. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to serve children because children didn't ask to come here and children did not ask for their conditions that they live in. And working in Woodlawn was a um, opportunity for me to make impact and change in the lives of children with the families, bridging communities. So you became a teacher? Yes, mm -hmm. I became a teacher. I started as a teacher. Uh, I had a meteoric rise in the classroom. I was only in the classroom for a year and a half. My principal saw leadership skills in me, mm -hmm. and she told me that she wanted me to go back to school and get my Type 75, which is the administrative degree. That's, yeah, that puts you on the track to be a principal. Right? Yes, that puts you on the track to be a principal. And uh, So how many years were you teaching and then you were out? Just uh, a year and a half in the classroom. Shut your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so you actually, your, your skills are something said to this uh, principal yes. that uh, you belong in a leadership position. And, that, um, and so she urged you to go back to school. She urged me to go back to school and I trusted her and listened to her advice and the rest is her story, which is mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I then became an assistant principal at the same school mm -hmm. and then became a principal. I served in two other schools. Uh, I started at Pershing Magnet School. Mm -hmm. I then went to Curtis Elementary School and that experience in Pershing Elementary School was totally different than my experience at uh, Curtis. Uh, Pershing was more on an affluent elitist. Uh, point, whereas going to Curtis, it was on the other end of the spectrum. I mm -hmm. was in Roseland, you and I experienced, <laughs> yes, and I experienced. So you went from essentially a strongly middle-income yes. um, uh, uh, community school, school to now um, more where you had people who were challenged and disadvantaged. Yes, absolutely, and, and that is the reality of 
inner city urban schools. Mm -hmm. that so is, I needed that reality. And you got that spectrum, right? I had, yes, this absolutely. Is not, we're gonna to have to take a short break. And when we come back, we're gonna pick up our conversation with Dr. Cynthia Miller, who is now running to be the president of the Chicago Principals and Administrators Association. Stay with us. You're watching us on Facebook Live, but did you know we have an app as well? Download our UBM app in the Apple App Store or in the Google Play Store. Search for Urban Broadcast Media and listen to us anywhere at any time. And remember, at UBM, we inspire legacy, preserve culture, and amplify voices. So, um, uh, Dr. Miller, so you then uh, find yourself with a type, uh, type 77, 75 uh, certificate. Yes. And then what? Then I decide that there is something more that I need to do. Uh, being a principal, once I became a principal, mm -hmm. and I landed the contract for Fisk mm -hmm. Elementary School. Fisk Elementary School. Yes, okay. yes. Fisk Elementary IB World School, yeah, as I a know matter of fact. Right, right. <laughs> right there in Woodlawn. <laughs> right there in Woodlawn. Yeah. And um, I began to realize that service and serving was extremely important mm -hmm. to me. So I happened to attend a meeting. Uh, the chief of my network at the time was involved with the work of Bishop Rager as he was revitalizing Woodlawn. And she asked me to join her uh, because there were times when she could not attend the meetings and she wanted to make sure she had perspective with everything. So when she couldn't attend, I attended. And I was at the table with this think tank that Bishop Brazier had at that time regarding what's happening in Woodlawn and how can we make Woodlawn the place that the community of choice that we want it to be. Yeah. So Bishop Brazier called me into his office one time and he said, Principal Miller, I want you to go out there and round up all those principals and bring them in here to me. Mm -hmm. And at the time, giving historical context to where the schools were in Woodlawn, they were all underperforming schools, principals were not collaborating, doors were closed, the competition was negative between the schools. And at that time, I knew this, and when he charged me with that commission, I thought to myself, mm -hmm. first of all, I'm a novice principal. I'm a new kid on the block. Mm -hmm. Why is and he asking only, me? And you'd only spent two years, in the, not even two years in the classroom. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so who am I to do all I, this, right? I, absolutely. And yeah. these principals that I needed to influence were seasoned principals. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, you didn't tell Bishop Brazier no. Mm -hmm. So I, I went know out. that painfully. <laughs> <laughs> I went out uh, knocking on doors until mm -hmm. they finally let me in. They heard my story, what was going on, how I needed them to collaborate with me, how we needed to come together as a team of principals with a common purpose mm -hmm. for children, families, mm -hmm. uh, schools and to bridge our communities. Mm -hmm. They listened, the schools were underperforming, and now I can happily say that all of the schools in Woodlawn are high-performing schools. All of them? All of them, each and every one. How about that? Yes. I'll high five you on that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll put praise on that one. <laughs> right, right, by the grace of God. That's yeah. right, that's right. So, um, then, you, uh, then tell me about this journey now, the next move uh, uh, into the uh, CPA, the Chicago uh, Principals. Principals and mm -hmm. Administrators Association. Mm -hmm. So what, how did you get involved with that? Well, um, at the time, Clarice Berry was president mm -hmm. of the Chicago Principals and Administrators Association. Who was formerly at this. Formerly, so mm -hmm. our journey, mm -hmm. I have followed her footsteps. Mm -hmm. She brought me into Fisk mm -hmm. as a principal. Mm -hmm. She knew that I could take the school and take it to the next steps of mm -hmm. where it needed to go. Mm -hmm. And after I got pretty comfortable in my space of being a leader within a school and being a principal, she came to me and she said, Cynthia, you need to now come and get involved 
and understand the process of educational politics, mm -hmm. what's involved, and your leadership skills would be just the leadership skills that I need for you to support me with the Chicago Principals and Administrators Association. So I listened to her and I became president of an auxiliary. And being president of an auxiliary, you bring a spectrum of schools together and those principals, we come together and meet. And when we actually have the governing board meetings with the uh, CPAA, then we talk about what those principals say. So I was the voice mm -hmm. that represented area or auxiliary 16 principals. Mm -hmm. From there, I became secretary. I ran for secretary for CPAA and I became secretary. Now this secretary. is secretary of the whole organization. Whole organization, yes. All right. Step yes. by step, okay. Step by step, going mm -hmm. through the ranks. Mm -hmm. And then from secretary, I decided that I was prepped to be vice president uh -huh. of elementary school principals, mm -hmm. which is the second highest powerful position within the organization next to the president. Got it. We're going to have to take a short break, and when we come back, we are now going to see how this uh, person who starts out um, uh, in a challenged uh, environment and rises to the uh, position she is in right now and what the next steps are. But anyway, we'll be right back. Stay with us. UBM has a variety of shows ranging from politics, tech, and entertainment. If you're looking to bring your show or podcast to UBM, email us at urbanbroadcastmedia at gmail.com or message us on our Urban Broadcast Media Facebook page. Be sure to tell us who you are and what your show is about and leave your contact information and someone will get back with you. And remember, at UBM, we inspire legacy, preserve culture, and amplify voices. Now, uh, I want to kind of digress from the stru structural qu uh, questions uh, a bit. So what are the challenges now as you look at our public schools across the city? Mm -hmm. What are the challenges that we have before us uh, as a, an overall system? Mm -hmm. And what are, the, uh, what, are, what, are, what are our principles particularly challenged to mm -hmm. do? And, um, and how important would you say the leadership as a principal impacts the performance of schools, right? That's a big question, yes, yes. but I want to unpack this because people got to begin to see the role of the principal yes. and how that particular role uh, impacts their children's life. Yes, the principal is the key. She is or he is what makes the school what it is. And principals have to understand that although being in schools, we are often isolated, it is our role to get out there and advocate for the needs of children. If we don't advocate for those needs of our children, then who will? The district itself, I would say the major challenge that we have right now in terms of all of the schools is the issue of equity securing equity for all of our schools, securing equity for our neighborhoods, our families, and our children. Mm -hmm. And when you say equity, you mean fair distribution of resources, right? Absolutely, fair oh. distribution. We're not talking about equal, because equal mm -hmm. is something different, but mm -hmm. we're talking about who has the greatest need mm -hmm. and how are we going to meet that need for mm -hmm. those children and those schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we, we uh, years ago, when I was the chairman of the monitor commission, monitoring commission mm -hmm. for school desegregation, I remember that we had a number of true, uh, schools in those days that were seriously strapped in terms of performance. Yes. And uh, so, when we look at overall the performance of our schools today versus in yesteryear, which mm -hmm. you know, I was, I was the. Uh, Chairman of the Monitoring Commission in 1982. Mm -hmm. From I was there from 19, really 1981, all the way to when the consent decree came into place, all the way to 19, uh, 1988, uh, right after I left when uh, Harold Washington uh, passed. But so, uh, but what's where are we now? Well, I can give a very strong example of leadership for 
positive change mm -hmm. and progressive outcomes right here in Woodlawn. Mm -hmm. uh, we have five elementary schools. Prior to the five, we had eight elementary schools. Mm -hmm. In the year 2013, 50 CPS schools were closed mm -hmm. uh, due to underutilization and some due to underperformance. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first started this work with Bishop Brazier, again, mm -hmm. all of the schools were underperforming. Mm -hmm. And I say this to say that the work of the principal, bringing those principals together, having us talk about our stories, no longer struggling in isolation, sharing resources, and looking at those levers of resources and how we could support each other within that. This is what built a very strong community of cohesive schools. And again, now all of the Woodlawn schools are high performing schools. Got it. We're going to have to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to pick up our conversation. Stay with us. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. So Dr. Miller, um, you, um, I think that you paint a picture of hope, um, and uh, which is different from the picture of hope uh, or the picture that when I was involved in the uh, 80s and more actively involved in the school, uh, schools and obviously um, having spent many years uh, under the leadership of Bishop Arthur Ambrosia, yes. uh, dealing with public education, housing, jobs, so many other things. So I think that what you're saying is that the schools are moving in the right direction. Definitely. Is that right? It's yes. a positive direction. It's a positive direction. And we've become independent. Um, we are still very close, but because we are functioning and we know how to make this work, we figured out mm -hmm. the key yes. to do this. Mm -hmm. And the key is collaboration. The key is sharing leadership, mm -hmm. leveraging resources. Mm -hmm. Because there is enough for all of us to share. Working in isolation is to everyone's detriment. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a, bit, that's a mouthful. And my sense is that um, in this era of um, uh, where more and more there's a sense of um, isolation in the land, it's, it's um, you know, the whole idea of selfie and me and mine, et cetera we tend to lose the concept of, of, of ours yes. and us yes. uh, um, as we move more and more towards the me and mine. And we and, all share the same children. Yeah, and so uh, it's, it's, it's refreshing uh, to hear a leader, uh, to see the we and the us and the team. As a matter of fact, uh, this, uh, as we uh, prepare for our final segment, you have here a dream team that is running for office. Yes. And so you're not running just as Cynthia Miller. No. You have no. a team of other people. Yes. And you could just as easily say, I'm Cynthia Miller, vote for me. But rather than to do that, you put together a slate of, uh, of other professionals, uh, uh, teachers and administrators. The important thing, I think, is this whole idea of sharing and collaborating. Yes. And so you created a dream team. And yes. So with gonna, like minds uh, for service. Like minds, right. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. right. Well, uh, there's a um, Jim Collins in uh, From Good to Great. Yes, <clears throat> I know. He said that if you're going to ever try to bring about any uh, institutional change, make sure that you, everybody on the bus That's right. is going in the same direction. That's right. right. Which means that you can't have dissension That's among right. those who are supposed to be working and together. And I'll add one. I'm sorry. In the right seats. Right. In the right seats. Right. <laughs> but anyhow, um, so much is going on in our public schools uh, these days. Uh, 
uh, Dr. Miller, that um, and uh, finger pointing and what have you, but it's refreshing to have a positive uh, take on what's going on in our, in our public schools. So what I want to do now is I want to begin for you to help me understand what is the Chicago Principal and Administrators Association? What is that? The Chicago Principals and Administrators Association is a professional association for principals, assistant principals, as well as administrators. It is a li liaison, if you will, between Chicago Public Schools and what happens with the work of principals, the work of assistant principals, it can be serve as a buffer. It can also strengthen relationships with CPS. We value our association with Chicago Public Schools. We certainly value our relationship with our CEO, Janice Jackson. We want to come together to make positive change with progressive outcomes. We want to make sure that the principals have a voice at the table when it comes to policy making and decision making. So long have politicians made choices for principals and educators and told us what we have to do. And many of those people are not in schools. They don't know how schools operate. They don't know the voice and the challenges of the principals. What we want to do is bring that to the table with CPS because the members of CPAA are CPS employees. Got it. I got it. We're going to have to take a short break. All right. <laughs> and when we come back, we'll pick up our conversation. This will be our final episode. So uh, stay with us and we have more to come. One of the most important decisions Chicago teens will ever make just got a whole lot easier. Go.cps.edu is a new online platform that will stream the high school applications for Chicago public schools. If you are a rising eighth grader or know of any, tell them and their families to visit go.cps.edu to start learning about CPS high schools and subscribe to receive important announcements about the opening of the application system in August. This message is brought to you by Urban Broadcast Media. So um, we get the idea that this uh, C, Ch Chicago Principal and Administrative Association uh, is a group uh, and an association, a private association. Now, help us to understand the relationship between C, we barely hear CPAA at all. Mm -hmm. We hear a lot about the Chicago Teachers Union. Mm -hmm. So uh, how we, uh, help us to appreciate um, where the CPAA uh, is and where the Chicago Teachers Union is. Well, there's a difference between uh, CTU and CPAA. CPAA is an association. Mm -hmm. CTU is a union. Right. Therefore, the teachers union have bargaining rights. Mm -hmm. CPAA, we have bargaining agreements, okay. which is something different. This is why the, it's called an association, and this is why the collaboration between CPAA and CPS is so important. So we have a common purpose. Mm -hmm. The main purpose is certainly children, mm -hmm. how we can create better lives and better conditions mm -hmm. for Chicago's next generation of leaders mm -hmm. are children. The relationship between CPS and CPAA, there's a common purpose, and that common purpose is passion. That common purpose is why we do what we do. And that's from the district to each, every individual principal. Principals are on the front lines every day fighting for children, fighting for resources, equitable, equitable resources for their schools. This is why it is so important that CPS engages CPAA at mm -hmm. the table because there are 16 auxiliaries and with all of those principles, those voices, every president of that auxiliary brings that voice to the table. And we want our CEO to come to our table. 
we in turn want to come to the CEO's table. It is a when you say table, you mean meetings and where you're meetings, talking and discussing absolutely, and, and maybe absolutely. doing a little horse trading, right? Uh, and and negotiating, and you know. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And and I will say this, Dr. Finley, Finney, it is in the best interest for CPS as well as CPAA to collaborate together in a democratic process mm -hmm. where the principal's voice is heard at that table and that we be a part of whatever policy decisions and making that impact our lives mm -hmm. and the lives of children that we serve every day. Well, I'm gonna be very honest with you, uh, Dr. Miller. Um, before you, uh, I knew that there was a principal's association, but I did not uh, elevate it in my own mind to the level that it is in reality. Yes. Uh, my sense was that we always had a, a, a CPS, a Chicago Board of Education, CPS, and the teachers union, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Those were the power players that I saw at the table. Yes. Now I think that we have an opportunity to see that there are different, uh, another power player there that yes. nobody's been paying a whole lot of attention to. Yes. But you are now elevating this as a player uh, and as, as a part of the whole process to achieve high level of uh, performance for our public schools. So this, Absolutely. I'm and plead ignorant because I didn't know it and, and in terms of the the influence that it has because we always say oh the teachers union and the board of education yes. they're it's in a, a collective burn and, and, and they're fighting or they're agreeing yes. and and so yes. if they agree everything is hunky dory yes. but what you're saying is that there's another element that's been at the table or trying to be at the table right. or in negotiation all the time and that is the principal association that's right, right? and we want the best for the city of chicago mm -hmm. as okay. well as chicago's children now we have this moment that we've got to speak to your election okay. right so in the camera, tell us why one should vote for you to be the president of the Chicago Principals Association. Well, first of all, I'm running for president of CPAA. I have a dream team slate. And the reason why we call it dream team, because it is so important, our hopes, our aspirations, our desires to work with CPS, to come to the table, to have that voice. Please vote for the Dream Team. If you want positive change with progressive outcomes, I'm your girl, that's the team. Remember, all ballots must be mailed by May 16th. Thank you. So thank you so much, Dr. Miller. I want to shake thank your you, hand, Dr. it's been a pure pleasure. Yes. And you have been with Intersection, where faith, business, and politics meet. See you next time.